a lot of times, if you if you watch anyone really, but especially somebody like Jordan Peterson, if you get a snapshot of what he has to say and you take it out of context of everything else he said, yeah. you can get a false impression of him. Yeah. You know, like sometimes I've even got his voice in my head, like moralizing at me, like you better watch it, Mister. You better like clean your damn room, or else you're on a one way highway to hell. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, fuck off, man. Like, give me a break. Modern day mystics, fellow truth seekers, James and Justin here, your favorite spiritual analysts on all things culturally relevant, bringing you today the latest on Jordan Peterson. He's Jordan back Peterson at it again, back. folks. That guy don't sleep, man. He's always got something on the go. So he was on Joe Rogan this week, and there's many things we could talk about, but he was one thing in particular he brought up was his new like uh, invitation to the future, his new view of the future as kind of like an opposing force to say the world economic forum yeah so to wait wait uh, to save the world economic Forum. not to save that it was kind of like against it it's like the counter oh, option okay. the, uh, the alternate option for, for those the, that don't like pepsi he's providing coke yes exactly that's exactly a good way to look at it uh so we'll take a look at this video get into it dissect it and uh yeah let's why'd you make him be coke I set up an international consortium based in London. I can't tell you all the details yet, but we're, we're, we're trying to put together something like an alternative vision of the future, say an alternative to that kind of apocalyptic narrative that's being put forward, at least implicitly by organizations like the WEF, you know, and that's the virginal planet, rapacious tyrant, you know, all devouring consumer religion. And it's more like, First of all, props to the suit. How about that, uh, you know, <laughs> that blue and red thing he's got going on? He just needs to paint his face. Yeah, I'm the other side, like, surprised uh, he's not flipping a coin or something. <laughs> Two, Two Face. Oh, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, he's, he's coming at it. He was very plain and simple. Like, the, he's like, you can obviously tell he's not very pro WEF and what they're. Uh, so I think this is good because I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, we're not going to just want one or two options. We're going to see, want to see what everyone's got to say, right? Right. And so like, this is a step in that direction now. Right. Well, who's going to be, does he mention who's going to, who's going to be in his thing? Well, you're going to see, let him, let him break it down okay. and we'll, we'll, he does eventually get into something some like, well, we want to ask people six key questions. Okay. So how do we get energy and resources at the lowest possible cost, as rapidly as possible, to the largest number of people around the world? That's one question. And so there's a presumption in the question, and here's one of the presumptions. You don't get to save the planet by making energy prices so expensive that no one poor can afford them. That's Trade. off the table. So if you want to develop alternative energy sources, no problem. You know, because, hey, man, the more energy sources we have, the better. But you don't get to impose your utopian vision in the service of your narcissism on the poor. We're going to try to make the poor rich. We're going to try to alleviate absolute poverty. Pro-human view on... Love that. I love that. And I'm sure this piece is like, yeah, I'm sure he's gaining followers by the second who see that because people are like, damn, man, you're not going to like tax the environment out of hurting itself. That doesn't really work. And so like, I, he, I think he's more along the line of like through innovation, right? So I think we're gonna. I'm see just. I'm. I'm. Uh, you know. I'm. A, I know he's saying good things, right? Yeah. But and I like Jordan Peterson. I like. I. I don't think that he would be. He's not necessarily manipulative or anything, but it's just like you know, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. We shouldn't be beating the poor. Like yeah, no duh. You know, yeah. what the F is going on in the world where we would... But it does feel like that. That's the yeah. thing that's going on is that, like, people in the world are like, Hey, man, like, uh, like my gas bill's going up yes. every month. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and I don't see the environment getting better. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? All you're doing is making me poor. Yeah, like, that's a pretty overt uh, wrong thing, right? Yeah. But I'm just, um, I always leave room for, oh, I'll get in. I, you know, like, isn't that the, the, uh, the operation of any politician yeah. is to be like, and we need 
you know, gold for everybody. Like, Yay! <laughs> like that's always good. Anything that's the yeah. popular thing to say yeah. is going to be like the thing, and that's I'm not. I, hey man, I don't have a problem with Jordan Peterson. Yeah. But it's just funny to me that some of the ways he talks and yeah, I just thought I'd add that in there. Yeah. Environmental stewardship front. That's the next question. Environment. What are the major problems that are confronting us? How do we take a sophisticated multidimensional view of that? How do we prioritize our attempts to establish our states and our international relationships properly so that we prioritize human well-being, you know, in harmony with nature to the degree that's possible, but human focused and not predicated on the idea that there are too many goddamn mouths on the planet to feed and that you're evil if you just think about having children. So then on the governance front, this is where it gets kind of more left wing, I would say, is none of the people involved in this consortium so far are very thrilled with global corporate fascist government media and, uh, and, co and uh, corporation collusion. You know, and we're seeing this at the high end. It's like a Tower of Babel is that the, the powerful players in the world are increasingly collaborating to impose a top down vision of the future on everyone. And that's a future that's predicated on a zero growth model. And the idea that, well, we'd need five planets really to support everyone at the current standard of living that obtains in the West. So the best pathway forward is to deny loans by the World Bank to developing countries so they can't develop, you know, energy sources, which all that'll mean is they're going to burn wood and coal, obviously. So, so that's the third question is... He's saying, oh, he's so good at, like, just, like, with his but words. But, Jordan, is it predicated? In some sense. Is it predicated in some sense? What do you mean? Like, I just, he says, yeah. in some sense and predicated. A lot. <laughs> I, like, I'm sure, like, he's hitting all the right bells to the, like, he knows his audience. So, like, when he's talking, when he's talking there about the, like, all the world powers getting, like, all the richest, like, you know, businesses and the government... And like, and the banks and everyone getting together and having this like top down and all the people at the bottom going, yeah, Jordan, get him, get him. He's saying the right things. Sure. Uh, but again, that's like spoken like a true politician, right? Well, yeah, that's so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just being aware of that, yes, man. Yeah. I mean, th this guy has taken a lot of heat in his life yeah. for saying controversial things. Yep. And like. For God's sakes, his his medical license is on the line. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He takes some risks, right? But it's just, you know, the same thing you'd apply to anybody. Is any of this being said in some kind of political fashion to, yeah. to what you just said? Well, he says he wants to get a consortium or whatever. They're going to get together in London yeah. with a bunch of people. And I know, like... That's like the same thing that the World Economic Forum is doing. Like a bunch of people yeah. are getting together yeah. in a place yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're deciding things for humanity. And he's saying, well, we're going to get our people. And we're going to go get into a place. But we only... wanted to save humanity <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the difference here he's going to say in a bit, there's a little bit of a difference. You know, how do we arrange systems of governance to stop the march of something like pathological gigantism? This is why I like people like Russell Brand and also you to some degree politically, you know, because you guys are very, what would you say, sensitive to the danger of that kind of corrupt collusion, that regulatory capture that occurs when corporate entities and media entities and governmental entities are all in bed together, Sorry. like the FDA and the CDC yeah. and, and so forth and so on without end. So that's, that's the third question. The fourth question is, what do we put forward as a vision on the family policy front to facilitate the, what would you call it, the encouragement and the maintenance of long-term monogamous couples who are child-centered and to make increasing the birth rate part of that policy? To put Paul... Uh, he's getting into weighted waters there. Once you start getting into, like, we wanted to, like, provide for, like, what we think, like, the nuclear family, like... And I'm sure there's tons of people. That's where you start, like, getting into, like, choppy waters because other people are like, I don't want the traditional family model that you're offering. It's the year 2023. There's yeah. thruples watching this right now that are looking at each other like, well, what about us and our 17 kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's almost there. a place that would support long-term, stable, monogamous families, two-parent families, and child-centered. You know, because in the West... Because we're very immature, we think that the purpose of a marriage is the happiness of the people who are involved in the marriage, the husband and the wife. 
And that's just not the purpose of marriage at all. The purpose is long-term facilitation of their psychological and spiritual development and the establishment of an environment that's beneficial to children. That's a responsible way of thinking about it. And so we need to have a serious conversation about what that means. And so there you have it. JP's vision for the future. That was just some of them. I think he said he had like six steps there, but I had to cut it off because he goes on forever about Moses or something. You know how JP is, right? He's like, he gets off track and then he talks forever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's saying some right things. But, you know, time will tell the story. And uh, one thing that you kind of miss in there that you don't see is that he, when he gets talking later on, he opens it up to everyone. He was like, yeah, in the beginning, there's going to be a few people there, but we want this to be a conversation that we're not hiding and that everyone can see yeah. and have their two cents about. That's a good point. Like I, I actually, you reminded me that I wanted to say something about that. A lot of times, if you, if you watch anyone really, but especially somebody like Jordan Peterson, if you get a snapshot of what he has to say and you take it out of context of everything else he said, yeah. you can get a false impression of him. Yeah. You know, like sometimes I've even got his voice in my head, like moralizing at me, like, you better watch it, mister. You better like clean your damn room or else you're on a one way highway to hell. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, fuck off, man. Like, <laughs> give me a break. But the truth is, you know, I pretty sure I've heard him say like things admonishing someone like Milo Yiannopoulos, like, Oh, Milo's a, you know, he's a trickster of a guy. And like yeah. understanding somebody who's essentially like the comp diametrical opposite of his approach to things. Yeah. Like admonishing him. Maybe yeah. not nowadays because Milo's like hanging out with Kanye West and <laughs> apparently gone through conversion therapy. But I'm talking about like old trickster, the Joker, Milo Yiannopoulos. Yeah. Like Jordan Peterson. I'm like, give him a wink and a nod. I see what you're doing there, fella. You know, <laughs> like without hate. You know, like understanding that these things, even if you look at his whole corpus of things he's talked about, he gives the devil its dues. You know, he yeah. understands why somebody thinks somebody that's like not a conservative type person is yeah. the way they are. Just say something to him. You got to you got to look at the whole picture sometimes yeah. to get a this, good idea of something. Like this is just the beginning of something much new. Like something new where I think you're going to see lots of entities now like speaking up and saying, hey, we have some ideas here about the world and its place here. And like the World Economic Forum has, Economic Forum has been like this beacon that has been standing out and everyone's paying attention to it. Like, hey, we don't like what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there are some people who are like, no, no, that does sound good. Yeah. Uh, but now there's at least another option. Possibly for people to be like, okay, all right, now I see what's going on here. And then add a couple more options in there and then we can like mull over it and hopefully put something together that isn't just, you know, a bunch of rich oligarchs yeah. with yeah, their, yeah. you know, you know, puppetry yeah. making us do yeah. dance. And if anybody knows what the word corpus means, feel free to say in the comments because I just said that and I don't even know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, anyway, let us know what you guys think about uh, JP's vision of the future. Uh, we'd love to hear some comments from you on it. And if you liked the episode, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share it with a friend, and everybody, until next time, stay, stay spiritual. spiritual.